And the fact is, if we try to make our solutions be based on personal perfection, then we're going to fail consistently. We have to recognize that people are human and they will make mistakes from time to time. And while we want to minimize that, if we think about how we operate a system as a system, when one part falls short, whether it's technology or an individual, the others are there to buttress it so we still don't have a problem. What we want from safety is no inadvertent harm. We don't want to accidentally have a patient have an outcome that's worse than we thought we wanted them to have to begin with. If we were doing all these things and still had it, I can understand people saying, why would I bother? It's a rare event and we follow these procedures and it's still a rare event, why bother? And I think that would be reasonable. The fact is, that's not what we've seen. Millions of procedures later, anyone we've had, we can see flagrant violation, didn't mark the site, didn't do a timeout, didn't identify the patient correctly, right? Does that happen rarely? Yeah, and I'm not saying every time that you fail to do though, there's, a, there's an accident, but the only accident has been when that's been failed to do. This means compliance is important. It's not, it's not like a general suggestion. Checklist is a communications tool. It's a tool that guides communication, right? It's not an excuse for communication. It's a way to have structured communication so people understand what's going to be talked about, what's expected, and make sure you're not just relying on memory. If you say, do you have any questions, what's easy for people to say? No. Right? And then you don't go on. But if I go to each person, I say, suppose I said anesthesia. Anesthesia, what are you most concerned about for this case? I didn't say, are you concerned? In one case, the surgeon, he asks everybody first, and then he says, I'm most concerned he's doing a scope. Uh, um, it was a urology case, right? They're doing a cystoscope. And he's going to scope, and he goes, I'm concerned, you know, that we end up, might penetrate the bladder in this particular case and go open. And this, the circular goes, what? We're not set up to go open. That would be a good time to find out, don't you think? The point is that these are to, to stimulate conversation, not to just be yeah, 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 right? The, the most important thing in this whole thing is, and they don't say it quite like this, but when they ask about, where is it, about critical events, you should be not just are there any, right? What are you concerned about, I would say, should be the question. That's much more useful than saying, you know, is there a problem? You should talk about those, but say, what are you concerned about? It makes people be part of the conversation. I think error is a bad term. Errors is a personal term. It's not about systems. Errors depends on where you sit. So the goal, I, I would argue, is not eliminating errors. The goal is that we don't inadvertently harm anybody while they're being cared for in our system, right? That's the goal. The patient doesn't care if somebody's found at fault or not. They care if they get hurt, right? So it's, it's, it's a totally different thing. You know, you want to get robust, sustainable change, and that's saying if you think it's about errors, then we find one person, they made an error, what do we do? Tell them don't make mistakes anymore? That doesn't work. It's why did they make a mistake if they did one? We told everybody the goal is to prevent harm to the patient, not eliminate errors. And if you have even a close call, you need to look into it. Don't just say, wow, I'm glad I'm lucky and go on. So you want to have a preventive approach. You want the front line, I say the field, the front line to buy in, that they understand that actually I can make a difference, that if I identify problems, they get fixed, that it's about fixing problems and not assigning blame. That's a systems approach. And if you do that, you're more likely to have sustainability and you develop trust, which is the, the really foundation of a culture of safety. Part of the idea of the briefings and debriefings is you talk about things that could be a problem before the problem occurs. That gives you a better chance of being prepared, not to start winging it once things turn into, you know, turn into a shambles. The questions they ask for, what happened? You know, what do, you know, why did it happen? And what are we going to do to prevent it from happening again? Those are the important questions. Who's, whose fault, at some point, maybe that comes in, but that's not the first question. If you start with your first question, whose fault is it, people do what you want, do what you ask. So they'll find out, who's the name I got to come up with? And then what is, what's your option at that point? Here's whose fault it is. What do you tell them? Don't do it anymore. I fire them. I rehabilitate them. If one person had it, if you believe what I said before, there's those that have and those that will. This person's just like the canary in the coal mine. They told you there's a problem. The question is, it could happen to other people. You want to remember that people don't come to work to hurt somebody. People don't get up in the morning and the snooze, you know, alarm goes off, they hit the snooze alarm and say, lay down there for another five minutes and say, now, how can I screw up today in a new and creative way? I mean, they're not generally thinking that. Sometimes you might wonder by the outcome, but they're not really thinking that. When anything bad happens, you ought to ask yourself a couple questions. What happened today? What should have happened? What usually happens? If you get three different answers, you have chaos. Nothing's in control. Because what should have happened is what's in your policy or procedures, right? What usually happens is the workarounds people do every day. If those two things aren't the same, fix that one first. Because there's not a lot of point to just looking at what happened today and fix that when nobody's following procedures or where there's no standard, right? You're just going to be out of control tomorrow. There should be one answer, you would hope. At worst, you'd like to have what should have happened, what usually happens be the same, and what, you, what happened today is something different. 
But if all three are different, you've got to address that. And if you don't, you're going to be chasing your tail forever. They never doubt that a small group of thoughtful, committed people can change the world. Indeed, it's the only thing that ever has. It doesn't take a cast of thousands. It takes a few people that say, this is what I'm going to do, and lead by example and do it, and the world will follow you. Thank you very much.